Welcome back into my kitchen. How did you get in here? Didn't even see you enter. You're very sneaky, but thank you for coming back for another episode of me frantically cooking and sweating and making bad jokes. Skip the small talk, let's get right into this thing. I asked you guys what I could possibly make in my kitchen with a knife and a stand mixer. Cause I wanna use my stand mixer and I may or may not have a new knife. A weirdly overwhelming amount of you guys said cinnamon rolls. You're borderline right, okay? You're borderline right. You do have to cut cinnamon rolls so that they become rolls, like individual ones, and you do have the option to use a stand mixer. Actually, the recipe I'm using doesn't even use a stand mixer, but I think I have to now. If I can't use the stand mixer, what's all this been about? So get over here. Oh, she a thick boy. Uh, we gotta get our stuff together. So we need flour, sugar, oat milk, coconut oil, cinnamon, some other stuff. This thing for sure, preferably one that you can hold two-handed. And we're gonna be making hot for foods, vegan cinnamon rolls. We are gonna want our water to be roughly 100 degrees Fahrenheit, because we're gonna mix it with some active dry yeast and sugar, and that's going to sit and activate for a little bit. One more thing about today's recipe is, I'm not gonna finish it today. For you, it's all gonna happen in one video. How convenient. What a great video that must be that it took multiple days to make. Um, nope, it's still a bad video, but it's gonna take two days because I have to prep it, and then when the cinnamon rolls are all rolled up and cut, I have to let them proof for like a day. It is officially like 95 degrees every day, which means the flies are trying to get into our house and we're just like, get out. And they're just like, let us in. Flies be like, let me in, I'm hot. And me be like, swap, swap, miss. So I'm going to pour a cup of hot water into our measuring container. Now we're gonna put one pack of active dry yeast and as well, we're gonna do a quarter cup of sugar, which activates the yeast. I know that because I'm a scientist. And we're gonna let this sit for, I think like 10 minutes. And while we do that, we are gonna get ourselves three cups of flour. Three, trace. So we got three cups of flour. Uh, this is not in the recipe, but in an attempt to make this not just like a crumbly shit show, I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of xanthan gum in here. Uh, now we're gonna put a teaspoon of salt, but since I can't find the teaspoon, I'm gonna do four quarter teaspoons some coconut oil, which is easy to scoop out of the container if it is a warm climate where you live. And we are gonna melt the coconut oil down so it's a liquid and not a weird runny solid. Uh, we're gonna stir around our dry ingredients. And then what we're gonna wanna do is create like a little well in the center. And that's where we're gonna put our wet ingredients inside this little well. Just don't fall down the well, okay? Cinnamon buns are something that my mom used to make me that I really, enjoyed as a child, and I never actually made them up until today. I've never made cinnamon buns, uh, except when I was helping my mom in the kitchen, which really meant just like eating from the bowl and licking the spoon. And you know, you were a kid, you know? You know how it is? Kids, am I right? Next you're just gonna have a nice little conversation with the yeast. Cooking is all about love and communication. Are you ready? I don't think it's ready yet. Oh, and uh, I know I said that this week I was gonna try my hand at jackfruit, but I'm struggling to get inspired with a jackfruit recipe. I kind of feel like all of the jackfruit recipes I'm seeing are a little bit the same, and I want my first crack at making really good jackfruit meat substitute to be kind of banging and kind of like different than what you're seeing out there. So uh, I wanted to give that episode a little more time, so I decided we'll take a break, we'll go down Sweet Street, and make us some cinnamon rolls because no one's gonna be mad at this. No one's gonna be mad that I did this today. And I'm gonna make them nice and thick, like real thick with like two or three C's. And they're gonna be Pinterest approved because we're gonna put them in a cast iron pan. All right, the yeast is ready and the coconut oil is ready. So we are going to pour the yeast and the coconut oil. So you're gonna just kind of fold the wet and the dry together until they're all mixed and nice and one happy, delicious dessert family. This is not how it looks in the video. This is not Pinterest. My hands are not clean and tidy and attractive. What the hell is going on? No, no, more flour. This is how we solve our problems, okay? When things are just really fucking weird and look at my hands, oh my God. You just add carbs to your problems and then they become less of problems. Remember why you came here, okay? It was not for professional cooking or anything that's remotely 
acceptable, but rather for the energy of a hungry Aries and the creativity of one who doesn't know how to do anything. It's actually not that bad right now. Like the texture of this dough feels, for what I'm used to, relatively kept and put together. I'm gonna put some of the remaining coconut oil in here. Just kind of oil it up so nothing sticks because this is where we're going to keep the dough for a little bit, let it rise. This is where the patience that I don't have needs to appear magically. Um, we're going to take our nice looking actually and pretty malleable ball of dough. This is actually really fun. Feels like I'm playing hot potato with myself because I have no friends. I'm going to put it in here. I'm back, don't worry, I didn't leave you. I'm gonna put some plastic wrap, not the music kind, on top. And then a little bit of a towel to keep the plastic wrap in. And we are gonna just let this sit at room temperature over here. That's where our dough's gonna sit. And then this mess is just gonna clean itself up magically when I go like this. Okay, so we have two hours to wait. Hey Google, set a timer for two hours. Or don't, it's cool, you're probably busy, don't I won't bother you. Uh, so in two hours, which is gonna be 1910, uh, we're gonna take that out. Cut and roll, baby. Get those things in the fridge, I believe, overnight. We'll check that later, I don't know. We'll just hang on, okay? Right now, we have something very special to unbox. This is an unboxing video within a cooking video. Let me show you. So one day I was um, on the internet and I found this guy named Don who makes knives with his hands. He's like a knife maker. And I instantly was just blown away by how cool and beautiful the knives he made looked. And being someone who cooks recreationally and enjoys using a good knife, I thought, how cool would it be if I got my own handmade knife? Specifically to use right here in this kitchen when we make these videos. I don't know, I thought it'd be cool. So I reached out, I was like, hey, I want a knife. And he was like, cool, I'll make you one. And here we are, the knife is here. I literally haven't even opened it. I cut open the tape, but I have not looked at this knife until now. I wanted to open it on camera. So let us do that. I'm gonna open it so you can see it first and better. Whoa, it's so sharp too. No, that's the foam. Okay, I'm gonna read the note. There's a note. It says, type chef's knife, steel RWL34 stainless, handle African Blackwood series Aries Kitchen. That is so cool. What? Oh my God. <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? This is so beautiful. It has his signature and then it says Aries Kitchen on the blade. This is so absolutely insanely cool. Let's pop this off. Oh my God. It feels incredible, like this handle. Oh my God. This is my knife, baby. I don't know, this feels super special. Now I just need to not cut myself with it. Um, shouts out to Don. I'll link him if you guys are interested. Woo! Are you kidding me? Anyway, a new weapon slash tool has been added to the Aries Kitchen arsenal. Don't worry, I'll be very careful with it. And if, I, and if I'm a little less than very careful, it's okay because I know where the Band-Aids are. Um, see you guys in two hours, I guess. Okay. The dogs have been walked and the dough has proofed and we're back, ready to make things happen. Kermit's crying in the background because he wants dinner. Sorry bud, gotta finish this, then you can eat. So let's see how this turned out. Whoa, it's huge. It's so big, oh my God. All right, so we're gonna flour our work surface generously and enjoy the ambiance of Kermit crying in the background. And we are just going to um, like peel this out. It shouldn't stick. There we go, it's not sticking. We're gonna sprinkle some flour and we're gonna get our rolling pin. I'm pretty much doing this recipe kind of exactly how Lauren did it. We're just gonna, and I think we wanna get it into like a long square and make it pretty thin. So we're gonna like shape it like less circular, more square. Also, I think you can let the, like when you're done making the rolls, I think you can let it prove for like two hours if you don't have time, but I think we're gonna leave it overnight. The difference between gluten-free flour and regular flour, well one of them is, you can't really like lift and stretch dough the way you might like to. All right, let's try to get the last bit of flour off of the surface. And we're gonna take some vegan butter and just kind of spread it all uh, across the top. Cover the surface 
while Kermit stands below and licks little drops of butter off the ground because he's a nasty boy. The butter is um, for flavor, I think, but also mainly to just get this sugar mixture to stick on the cinnamon roll. Uh, the cinnamon mixture, by the way, is prepared. It is sugar and cinnamon. And we are going to try to cover the whole surface with the cinnamon sugar. This is actually delicious, by the way. I took a little bite of, uh, of it just to make sure it wasn't cinnamon sulgur. It's a common mistake. This is what's gonna be on the inside of your cinnamon roll. So this is important. Be generous with this. Don't be mean, be generous. We are gonna roll this puppy. So this is, this is where it's gonna get kind of dicey, I feel like. I wanna make these thick. So I might roll it this way. No, we're supposed to roll it the long way. Let's roll it the long way. This is not gonna be pretty, y'all. Just warning you. I'm gonna use this spatula to kind of get the parts that might be sticking off the surface because inevitably, at some point in the recipe, my flour is just gonna fail me like it's doing at the current moment. Okay, this isn't exactly a tight roll, but you know, we had to do it to them. When it's thick, sometimes it's not tight. There's a hole right here, everything's fine, everything's fine. It's possibly not fine at all. Oh man. So this is just a big old snake now. Long little slithery guy. <laughs> and we're putting it on the cutting board because we just got ourselves a brand new knife, handmade, by the way, okay? And we're not gonna cut on the kitchen surface with a brand new knife. We're gonna cut right down the middle. Oh, what a good first cut, huh? What a good first cut. Okay, so now we're gonna move this here, move that there, there we go. Oh my God, this knife. Okay, well, this is, I think, the hardest part. Now we're gonna put a, a little bit of the vegan butter in the pan, just kind of spread it around because we don't want nothing sticking. And this is where we're gonna leave the cinnamon rolls to chill and proof overnight. Uh, we're not gonna proof it in the fridge. We're gonna wanna proof it at room temperature. Uh, just covered. You're gonna wanna give them space actually, cause they're gonna grow significantly overnight. I'm choosing just the MVPs here, okay? This is gonna be the non Pinterest pan over here, cause it's not cast iron and it doesn't look hip, but this is where we're gonna put the leftovers. Similar to the HBO show called The Leftovers. I'm just popping. These are the second string players right here. Nothing wrong with second string. So not nearly as pretty, decently okay. We're gonna see in the morning how all of this pans out, but the good news is we can, look at how much flour I have on me. Oh my God. How am I this messy? How is it even possible? I'm just gonna say it, okay? Baking is a bitch. It's an absolute bitch. This is what we're going to bed with, knowing full well it could just turn into a disaster tomorrow, but we will find out in the morning. I'll see you with the coffee in my hand in like uh, 14 hours. Okay. Grab your caffeine, grab your water bottle, grab a beverage, take a nice sip of it, and then set it down somewhere where you can't spill it. Because I'm gonna show you what our cinnamon rolls look like after proofing overnight. Yeah. Let's check the B team. Just as weird and bad. You know what this looks like? This looks like food in a video game when you look at it closer and it's just like flat and there's, <laughs> It looks like a picture almost. There's no 3D space about it. It's just literally like a picture of food. This is what that looks like. Flat food in a video game. There's just literally nothing left to do but cook them, okay? They might look better when we cook them, who knows? We're gonna cook these for 25 minutes on 350. And while that's going, you can get out of here. Get out of here. We're gonna bring Big Red back out because we're gonna make some frosting. Okay, so for the vanilla white frosting, which I think you're probably used to seeing on a cinnamon roll. We're gonna get some powdered sugar. We're gonna do about a tablespoon of non-dairy milk, which is oat milk for us. Half a teaspoon of vanilla extract and some of our uh, softened but not completely melted vegan butter. Then we're gonna say, mixer, do your thing. Bam. I don't know what to do here. Like, do I have to tilt the, oh, Jesus. Do I have to tilt the whole thing? Oh, it just moved. Oh my God, I got it off. 
for the caramel sauce, fourth a cup, which if you guys didn't know, is a half a half. I learned that recently. Uh, half a half a cup of oat milk. All right, then you do three tablespoons of vegan butter, fourth a teaspoon of sea salt, which I'm just gonna use my hands for. And then the most important part, which is a cup of brown sugar. Okay, so right now, while this is cooking, it's supposed to thicken up and bubble a little bit, and then that's kind of how you know it's done. It'll be like a thick drizzle instead of just liquid or whatever. The last thing we need for these cinnamon rolls is pecans, except for the fact that I don't want to put pecans on my cinnamon roll. So we're not going to get our pecans out. We're going to leave them in the pantry, and if you don't have them in the pantry, no problem at all. He can't be ruining recipes with nuts. You know what I mean? Okay, I'm gonna change the title of this video to how to make two-dimensional food like in a video game. Tell me that doesn't look flat. <laughs> oh no. It looks like I'm showing you a picture. What the heck? This is pretty bad. This actually might be my first admitted defeat, honestly. I guess the question becomes now, what do we do? Do we just put all the frosting? This is literal caramel. It is so good. I just made caramel. Holy crap. Okay, here we go. Caramel drizzle time. Like, I think it's hilarious that this looks like two-dimensional food. I, I don't know why it like, maybe it's an illusion from the way I'm seeing it. Maybe you guys can't see it, but this, it just doesn't look right. These are our cinnamon buns. <laughs> cinnamon buns smile for the thumbnail. I don't know what I made you into and I'm sorry. Uh, you look like you're not really enjoying yourself. <laughs> Figured it's time to probably try. See what the hype or lack thereof is all about. It's pretty good. I've never had Cinnabon or anything like that, so I don't know what to compare it to. I will say it definitely needs frostings because it's kind of like dry without it. Oh yeah, it's really good. Maybe I did it wrong. Maybe I proofed it wrong. I thought you're not supposed to put it in the fridge. Maybe you were supposed to. I'm sure I'll find out in the comments. We have some family coming over today and I am um, I'm actually pretty glad I made these because I, I don't think like anyone wouldn't enjoy it. We're not reinventing the wheel here, okay? This isn't some innovative, crazy, beautiful recipe, but it is Aries Kitchen. And when you go to Aries Kitchen, you never know what you're gonna get, baby. Aries Kitchen is like a box of gluten-free and vegan chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get and they also might be burnt and melted. Anyway, um, I'm sure Jenna will taste these later. She's not around to taste them on camera. I feel like she would like these. Also, shout out to my trainer for not firing me as a client. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you made these, good luck. And I hope that they turned out better than mine, which they honestly probably did. I think taste is obviously number one. Like what we make, it has to taste good. And then if it looks good too, it helps. It makes a fun video. This didn't really look that good. Looks like video game food or a piece of paper cut out in the shape of a circle, taped down in the bottom of a pan. I mean, this is like PS2 graphics. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you for hanging out in the Aries Kitchen. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys want to see next week. Shouts out to Dawn for my new knife. I fucking love it. I'm very excited to keep using it. Give me some knife heavy recipes. I want to show you, I want to show you that cut in dude. I think the most impressive part of this recipe is that I just straight up made caramel. Like this is caramel. I've never done that before. It's so easy to do. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you the whole recipe has no calories. Don't check that. Bye. Thank you.